Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are going to go over the three units from the Children of Fate banner as well as Rajat from the Enduring Love banner. It's going to be an in-depth analysis and review so you guys can get a better understanding of these heroes and their new skills from my point of view. First off is Sigbert. He's a Sword Cavalier, 41 HP, 34 attack, 35 speed, 31 defense, 16 resistance, and 157 BST. I guess we'll start off by talking about his resistance. Just like his daddy Xander, Sigbert has terrible resistance. His top for the fourth lowest among the whole cast of heroes but having low resistance doesn't matter too much because from the look of his stats he's obviously a player phase oriented unit i mean stat wise this guy is basically ryoma on a horse with more defense but less resistance also he's actually just as good as brave roy i consider brave roy to be the best offensive sword cavalier in the game when you compare these two with their weapons equipped it's very close sigbert has plus one speed and minus one attack over brave roy most of the time i always take more speed over attack especially in this case when the speed stat is around 35 you want to make sure your offensive hero can double as many heroes as possible because being able to double means more damage but moving along Sigbert's legendary weapon has built-in Swiss Barrow 2 which by the way it does stack with Swiss Barrow, Death Blow, and Darting Blow in the A slot so what you can do with him is just give him Heavy Blade 3 and he'll basically become Brave Roy with one more speed and one less attack. After said all of that, Brave Roy is still more free to play friendly because not everybody has a Ike laying around. Roy requires way less resources. Uh, these guys are just very similar, they each have their own pros. Like for example, what if Intelligence Systems releases a skill that's better than Swiss Sparrow and Life and Death in the A slot? Then that skill would be better on Roy because Blazing Durandal has built in Heavy Blade. But what if Intelligence Systems releases a really good A slot? skill that doesn't affect stats at all like heavy blade flashing blade triangle depth you know those kind of skills then in that situation sigbert would be better because his weapon has a stat boosting effect but in terms of which one can dish out the most damage one-on-one -on -one, then it would be sigbert Special is Dragon Fang, it's alright, I still prefer 3 charge specials. This slot depends on the rest of the build, there's a bunch of options, you have Draconic Aura, Bonfire, and even Gale Force. A slot is Death Blow 3, like I said earlier, this stacks with his weapon effect and should be good enough for the most part. With neutral IVs, this guy is hitting 39 speed without buffs and 45 with home cavalry. He won't be needing any more speed, 45 speed is a good number to be at, he'll be able to double enemies 40 speed and below. If your Sigbert is minus speed, then you can start considering skills like Swiss Barrel or Fury in the A slot. New C slot skill is Attack Tactic 3. At start of turn, grants attack plus 6 to allies within 2 spaces for 1 turn. Granted only if number of that allies movement type on current team is equal or less than 2. Okay, so think of it like Hone Attack 3, but with a plus 6 attack boost instead of 4, and affects allies within 2 spaces instead of 1. The drawback is the second effect, which confused a lot of people. In order for a hero to receive this buff, your team cannot have 3 or more of that hero's movement type. So here's a simple example. My team has 3 Cavaliers and an armor unit. One of those 3 Cavaliers is Sigbert. He can buff up the armor unit because there's only one armor unit on the team. He cannot buff up any of the other 2 Cavaliers because there's a total of 3 Cavaliers on the team. If it was 2 Cavaliers, 1 infantry, and 1 armor unit, then all of them are able to receive the buff. It's a very strong skill and I'll say that it's probably the best buffing C-slash skill in the game. 6 attack is a lot guys and mixed emblem isn't hard to make. So in terms of damage, Sigbert deals the most out of any Red Cavalier currently. He comes out of the box with pretty good skills, so he doesn't require that much investment. Pretty much just fill in the slots and he's good to go. If you want him to be more like Brave Roy, then that's a different story. His best boons are going to be plus attack or speed. Best bane is obviously resistance. It's already terrible, so having less of that doesn't really change much. A bane in HP wouldn't be that bad either, but it does slightly decrease his physical bulk. Next is Soleil, she's an infantry sword unit and at max level her stats are 37 HP, a high 38 attack, 35 speed, 20 defense, 24 resistance, and 162 BST. So this girl is crazy, Soleil has the highest attack stat among sword heroes, she has one more attack than Krom, and the same as Churchy's. Her offensive stats is just ridiculous, 38 attack and 35 speed. You can do a lot of things with this kind of stat spread, especially with Boons and Banes to take into account. She can go Slaying Edge, Wo Dao, Brave Sword, Zombok Toe, I mean she can use whatever she wants. I wouldn't say she's a better offensive hero than Mia or Ira, but she's definitely up there. As for her other stats, it's all average, which is kind of surprising considering how bonkers her attack and speed are. Her weapon is Fire Sweep, Sword Plus, Unit and Foes cannot counterattack. 
Now we have Fire Sleep Sword, Lance, and Bow. In my opinion, Fire Sleep weapons are the best player phase weapons in the game as long as you have heroes with the right offensive spread to run them. The effect prevents the target from counterattacking, so your unit basically hits them twice for free, assuming that your hero has enough speed. It also gets past skills like Vantage. The drawback is that the unit equipped with Fire Sleep Sword cannot counterattack during the enemy phase, but that shouldn't matter as much as long as you are careful with positioning. I'm guessing some of you guys are probably planning on sacrificing her to give her weapon to somebody else, so who's the best candidates? Preferably you want someone with really high speed, that's the most important factor, a lot of speed. You could give it to Long Q, Athena, Hana is also a good choice, Mia and Ira have their own unique weapons so I wouldn't give it to those two. As for Flyers, Sheeta would love this weapon. 15 Might would help her terrible attack stat and she already has incredible speed. And Lincia would be a better candidate but she has her own amazing legendary weapon. Special is Blazing Wind, even though the update reduced the cooldown from 5 to 4, I'm still not a fan of the special, especially on such a powerful hero like Soleil. This special is decent for arena points because it costs 300 SP but for the most part, it's useless for arena. Assuming that she is using the default set and can double all the enemies, she would activate it on the 5th attack which means that she has probably taken out 2 of the 4 enemies to get to this point. It would be better to just run a non AoE special like Draconic Aura, Dragon Fang, or even Aether just for arena points. However, Blazing Wind is nice for PvE, much better than Glowing Light and some of the other AoE specials because this one is more concentrated. A skills Darting Blow, more speed is nice so she can double more enemies but there are better options. Life and Death is the best A slot to go along with Fire Sweep weapons. Fire Sweep users don't really care about their defensive stats because enemies aren't able to counterattack, and Life and Death grants the most offensive stats out of all the A slot skills. Just be careful with positioning because her defensive stats are going to get butchered. If you want to take the high road, then Fury and Wrath is another option. The only way to safely and naturally drop down to 75% HP, aside from using assist skills like Art and Sacrifice and Reciprocal Aid, is from the recoil from Fury. Wrath is a bit unnecessary, but it's still something you guys can consider. C skills Drive Res 3, Drive skills are always great, Drive Attack and Speed are the best ones. Resistance isn't that bad, but it depends on your team comp. It's useful for allies with distant counters so they can get a bit more resistance to tank mages. There has been way too many good sword units lately, it's like one after another. First it was Ira, then Mia, now Soleil. I'll say she's like top 5 among sword infantry heroes. Ira, Mia, and Ryoma are top 3 for sure. Ike's pretty decent too because he can run steady breath well. Because there's just so many good sword units, the thing that I'm looking for nowadays are unique weapons and skills. Don't get me wrong, she's fantastic, but if you have Ira, do you really need Soleil? If you have Mia, do you need Soleil? Ryoma's not bad offensively either. I mean, Sigbert's situation is a bit different because I think there's only two outstanding player phase Red Cavaliers, which are Sigbert and Brave Roy. Sigurd is decent, but not as good as those two. And Eldigan has a decent player face set with the Brash Desperation combo, but that's only useful for melee on melee matchups. One thing for sure, she's excellent for Fire Sweep Sword Fodder. But anyways, best boons are going to be attack or speed. Fire Sweep builds would prefer speed over attack because doubling enemies is very important. Plus resistance is a plus 4 boon and reaches 28 which is not that shabby. I can definitely see her run a enemy phase build. Best bane is HP, it's the most disposable stat. If she's running Fire Sweep Sword then minus defense or resistance is fine. She receives a minus 4 penalty in defense so that hurts her BST just by a tiny bit. So that affects arena scoring very slightly. Next up is Shiro, he's a lance infantry hero and at max level he has 41 HP, 35 attack, 30 speed, 35 defense, 22 resistance, and 163 BST. All of these guys have high BST so it really is becoming the norm now. There's a bunch of lance units with similar stats to Shiro, there's Lucas, Oboro, Donald, and even Ephraim. He's flat out better than Oboro and Donald. I would say he has better stats than Ephraim too, but Ephraim is special because of his weapon. As for Lucas, Shiro has way more speed, but speed doesn't matter too much on Lucas because he's only used to tank physical enemies anyways, and lower speed helps him charge the special faster by allowing enemies to double him. The big difference is the health pool. Lucas is a better candidate for skills like Panic Ploy and Infantry Pulse, so he has potential to be a better supportive unit. What Shiro excels at better than the rest of the Lance Infantry units is being a duelist on the enemy phase. He's such a good unit with Steady Breath, especially when you take a look at his weapon, Bright Naginata. It's unique and grants attack and defense plus 4 during combat if bow 
initiates combat. So it's like an enemy phase sturdy blow or you can think of it like sturdy stance. With this weapon he'll have even more attack and defense than Lucas. Total physical bulk wise is nearly the same since Lucas has a bit more HP. But yeah you can give this guy a close defense 3 sacred seal with steady breath and his defense can reach up to 45 defense or 48 with a defense boon. Assist is swap, this slot is up to you, you can run reposition, dual rally skills, or just keep swap. My rule of thumb is to give drawback on ranged heroes, swap on tanky and armored heroes, and reposition on everybody else. A slot is steady stance, it grants more defense than a steady breath, but it's a lot worse since it doesn't have the cooldown reduction effect, but it's still great on Shiro. Another option is close defense, it grants 6 defense just like steady stance does except it doesn't work against bows and daggers. The upside is that it grants 6 resistance which may be useful against those upcoming dragon team. C slot is defense tactic, it's the defense version of Sigbert's attack tactic. Defense tactic is a lot less useful than attack tactic because it's more situational. Not every hero needs extra defense, on the other hand, everybody can benefit off of more attack. Nonetheless, still a very solid skill. Shiro is kinda in the same situation as Sigbert, they both are similar to their peers, but these two are the best duelists among them. Like I said earlier, he doesn't have the HP to run HP based skills better than Lucas can, but in terms of 1 versus 1 performance, Shiro is slightly better mainly due to his legendary weapon effect. As for boons and banes, it's a matter of preference, more attack is nice but not really needed. Speed can go both ways, plus speed is reaching that point where you can prevent most enemies from doubling him while minus speed can help him charge his special faster by allowing more enemies to double him. For these slow bulky steady breath heroes, I prefer to specialize in their defensive bulk, so I think plus defense would be the best boon. That'll help reduce damage from all physical enemies and you can also help dish out a couple extra damage from a defense based special like Bonfire or Ignis. The best bane in my opinion would be either speed or resistance. Minus speed for the reasons I mentioned earlier, it allows more doubles to charge his special faster. Minus resistance because his resistance is already on the lower side and with my playstyle, I wouldn't put him in a situation where he would have to tank Dragonstone or any type of magical enemy. Alright so a lot of people believe that Soleil is going to be demoted to 4 star and that sounds about right. So if you wanted to summon for her just because of Fire Sweep Sword Father then I would hold onto your orbs. I would just skip this banner in general because in late December there's going to be another legendary banner which I assume is another 8% banner. A lot of people got lucky from the recent one but there were also a lot of people that got unlucky so it's up to you whether or not you want to save your orbs for it. I'm probably going to save my orbs for that 8% banner because I got insanely lucky with this one. If you are planning on pulling from this banner, the banner ranking in terms of who is the best to summon for, I'm going to say Sigbert, then Shiro, then Soleil. Sigbert's attack tactic is the main reason why I put him over Shiro. Soleil is great for fodder, but she's probably going to end up as 4 star. It must be fate that brought me here. Alright, last hero of the video is Rajat. She's in a separate banner, more specifically the Enduring Love Voting Gauntlet banner or whatever. She's a green tone mage with 36 HP, 35 attack, 34 speed, 21 defense, 24 resistance, and 150 BST. She has the highest BST among infantry green mages, but it's still very low, so who cares about that? Best two comparisons are Nino and Summer Elise. I'm just gonna say she's basically exactly like Elise and worse than Nino. Her bulk is on the lower side, therefore you shouldn't turn her into an enemy phase unit. The best way to build her is probably a generic blade tome set. She's worse than Nino, but it's viable. Or you can stick with her default weapon, King Gronwolf. King Gronwolf is effective against cavalry foes. It's the evolved form of Gronwolf. The Keen version is upgradable with the weapon refinery mechanic, so that's pretty important. If you are planning on keeping this weapon on her, then the best options are either the effect upgrade or the one that gives her the extra 2 speed. I think the effect upgrade will generally be more beneficial because it eliminates the home cavalry buff from cavalry targets so that she has a better chance to score a double attack. On the flip side, the extra 2 speed makes her other matchups outside of cavaliers much much better. They each have their ups and downs. Assist is rally attack defense, good for arena points because of its high cost, therefore it's good for fodder. Aside from that, it's perfect for heroes like Shira. Lucas, Ike, Brave Ike, or even mages that are built to counter archers. A slot is distant defense. I don't think it's good on her. The other hero with distant defense is Celica, and they both are really squishy heroes with good offensive stats. You should try to build them for nuking, not tanking. Rajat might end up becoming a 4 star hero instead of Soleil. We might finally get a 4 star unit with distant defense, but who knows. C slot is savage blow. I mean, if you want to nuke someone and deal AoE damage with it, then be my guess. Otherwise, I would just give her a ploy or hone skill ability. 
Nothing really special about Rajat. Nino is a better Blade Tom hero and she's easier to summon, therefore it's easier to get Nino merge levels. Although Rajat has more attack, which kind of makes her a better Wolf Tome user in a way. With plus attack IV, she'll be able to one shot most Cavaliers. You could argue that Nino with Wolf Tome could just double and take out Horse Cavaliers, but let's say you were to run something other than Desperation in the B slot and couldn't one hit KO. Then Nino could be in trouble because she would have to take some counter attack damage and possibly get one shotted by some Cavaliers running distant counter or maybe a very high merge level Brave Lin. That's a small issue, probably not that important, but I thought it was at least worth mentioning. Best boon is attack or speed, best banes are any of the defensive stats preferably minus HP. Yeah, I don't think she's worth summoning for. There's a possibility that her rarity will drop down to 4 star. It's either Soleil or Rajat. I'll put my money on Soleil, I think. Regardless, don't summon for her unless she's your favorite unit. Also, I know a lot of you guys are angry because Intelligence Systems put Rajat on a separate banner similar to Ira, but it's not the same deal. Ira's situation was a bit different. Everyone assumed Ira was going to be in one banner along with the other three units because that's just how it looked like after watching the trailer. At least this time, Intelligence Systems actually announced that she was going to be on a separate banner. I think it's fine and I don't really mind that they are placing new units in different banners as long as they announce it. That's just me though. Anyways, let me know in the comments what are you planning to do with your orbs? Are you going to pull in one of these banners or are you saving your orbs? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing for more quality Fire Emblem Heroes content. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.